Ever hear those stories where somebody had lived a pretty interesting life and they, they pass away and then this narrative goes something to the effect of, but they were holding some terrible past. It's not the case this time. I can promise you that. This time is interesting because it's about a woman who lived here in Memphis at one point And when she passed, it exposed a colorful life. We'll get into it. Grab yourself a beverage and join us as we go drinking with dead people. And our subject this time out is one Laura Bullion. Every stone marks a story. Interesting stories, people like you and I. History that should be recounted. Here we toast those you may or may not know, who have gone on before us and left behind their tales to be told. Here, we'll be drinking with dead people. We are at Memorial Park Funeral Home and Cemetery here in East Memphis. Right behind me is 240. We're just inside the loop, if you will, far East Memphis. It's been around here for since about 1925 or so. And it's the uh, setting for part of season two of Drinking with Dead People. And we thought we would start with the story here of Laura Bullion, who is here. Now, there are no, if you'll notice, there's not any tombstones, traditional tombstones that you would normally see in some cemeteries. This place is a little bit different. They only allow these memorials, these markers, as you can see. Now, the story of Laura is fascinating because, you see, Laura lived in Memphis for the last 45 years of her life working as a seamstress, as a housekeeper. She was an interior designer. She made drapes, and she was actually quite good at it, apparently, because she was rather popular for that. But you see, Laura Bullion came here under a false identity. She claimed that she was the widow of a Civil War veteran, a fellow by the name of Maurice Lincoln. Uh, Not much is really known about Maurice, but uh, at any rate, she lived in various places in and around the city, And under normal circumstances, it would be a relatively quiet story end of that, right? She never married, never had any kids. Sorry, are we talking about her? (laughs) It's a great story. It starts, of course, as most of these stories do, with one's birth. And where was she born? Nobody really knows. There are three theories, one of which was Kentucky, another one Arkansas, and another one in Texas. And the years of her birth have spanned over the course of, say, 10 years. She apparently liked to fabricate her age a little bit, of which you'll see why. What we do know is that when Laura was about 13, she left home because her father, who was a bank robber, had gotten in trouble. She left home. She went to Texas, specifically San Antonio, Texas, where she became a prostitute and a bank robber herself. That's where she met a man by the name of Ben Kilpatrick. Ben figures heavily into this story, and the reason being is that Ben was working with a bunch of other outlaws. And this is where things get really colorful for Laura, because those outlaws was a group of fellas known as the Wild Bunch. And if you don't know who the Wild Bunch is, I can tell you this. It was run by Butch Cassidy. That Wild Bunch. Laura and Ben Kilpatrick ran with the Wild Bunch for quite some time, getting involved in all sorts of different uh, nefarious acts of crime, robberies, and things of that nature. And, and <laughs> Laura became known as the Thorny Rose, the Wild Rose of the Wild Bunch. Clever. Very colorful as well. Over time, Ben Kilpatrick and Laura left the gang course she had relationships with everybody in the gang at one point you know a girl of loose morals and even looser ideas and scruples (laughs) kind of a fun girl and that's why we're here talking about her well at any rate ben and laura get involved in what is known as the great northern train robbery in 1901 early in 1901 it was a successful train robbery and the two of them made off with an untold amount of money out on the lamb They find themselves living in Knoxville, Tennessee for a stretch, just up the road from here. Also, they found themselves in St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where the trouble began. Laura was arrested. 
She was in possession of about $8,500 in forged banknotes that came from that train robbery. Well, case closed. She's off to jail. So was Ben. Ben Kilpatrick was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Laura got 10 years for her role in the great train robbery. After about just under five years, Laura was released, where she would later go on to live a life of the quote-unquote straight and narrow. (laughs) Maybe not so much. As Ben, well, while he was still incarcerated, he and Laura exchanged letters throughout the years, staying in touch, but they would never meet again. Ben got out of prison after serving 10 years, went down to Texas and decided to return to his old ways, attempted to uh, rob a train, and was shot and killed in the process. Meanwhile, Laura lived in various locations in and around the city of Memphis. Only one of them still exists, one on Madison Avenue in Midtown. I've been living here for many, many years and have driven by that place a million times and never knew it. But now you know the story as well. It's kind of a cool old spot, but that's where she lived. Ultimately, she passed away. December 1961, she died at the Shelby County Hospital from heart failure at the age of 85. A colorful lady indeed, with a name like the Thorny Rose. You can't go wrong with that. And with that, dear Laura, I'll have a drink to you and your past. Be sure to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, click the little notification bell. It tells you every time we upload a new episode. And in the meantime, join us as we wander among the headstones of history and go drinking with dead people.